Okay, um... <laughs> this is by no means up to our usual subpar category, uh, uh, standards or whatever, but me and James have been following the Bitcoins, and, um... They had an interesting weekend. But that's the, the that's the polite way to say. But right now, good luck selling your bitcoins <laughs> or buying them, for that matter. Uh, it's, is, is there a single exchange that like didn't get knocked out by this Dama effect? Because as I understand, it, they've all shut down. It's not just MT Gox. Well, things are still selling, but not too much. Uh, well, okay. Uh, what, look at the volume. There, there's there, there's still some going across, but I'm seeing that um, uh, they're going. One of the things, nothing. What the hell? Okay, I, I, I don't know what the hell happened there, but hopefully it doesn't happen again. Uh, we may have had a momentary glitchness there, because suddenly the whole screen went black, and I, like, refreshed it, and it came back. <laughs> it's like, uh, so we may have a big black spot in the audio. Now, um, it, one of the things no one, none of the exchanges, none of the, you know, various sites that go, this is the estimated price of a Bitcoin right now, and so on and so forth, have been taken into account is that there's way more people selling them than buying them, which means the, the whole market's out of whack to begin with. Uh, but uh, what, like you said there's still people selling them right now. What, uh, okay, what, uh, is that just, you know, hey, I have Bitcoin, send me money via PayPal or send me a check or, or whatever, or is there an exchange that's still up? Because, uh... Exchange, there are other exchanges that are still up. That's what Bitcoin Watch tracks. Okay, name a few that are still up for... Well, then again, if you were invested in MT Gox or Tree Hill or any of the places that have shut down, you can't get your... Biggest ones. Yeah, you can't get your coins out of their trade right now until okay, they... Okay, so uh, the, the non-dollar-based ones are all up, basically. Uh, but a few ones, B7 USD and BitMarket USD, are, those are some of the dollar ones that are up. Okay. But uh, the things that aren't based on the dollar, the things that aren't trade that are trading euros or rubles, those are still up fine. Okay, but those wouldn't work well with. Uh, well, then again, none of the exchanges work well with a U.S. bank-funded account. They're all using Dola or Liberty or something like that. I. Uh, this guy just lost. 25,000 Bitcoin, uh, he should be madder. He was very mad, but I'm surprised. <laughs> well, look, are you talking about, like, what MT Gex is saying, or there's what, are there somebody on the Bitcoin? No, 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 different way. He I, didn't lose it from MT Gox. What, how did he lose it? Yeah, no, th this guy, big. I don't, I, I think he, I think, I don't know. It's a long thread. Uh, what he did is he, the mining computer, somehow, that he had, he was running a mining computer, and he also had it running, or using IRC somehow, and it, it got in, I think, through an exploit via IRC. And, Maybe an ECC exploit. And they took his coins. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There, there's, there's exploits that you could do where you could force someone to transfer a file over a few things. If you're using a very, if you're using a weird client or an old version, it's possible. No, I see. Uh, it, and he, he stole. That, that's massive. That, that's half a million dollars. <laughs> yeah. That, well, like, okay. Uh, the two, you said 25,000. Let me see. The two prices for the Bitcoin right now, 25,000 times about five bucks. In that case, it'd be 125,000. And then. Anyway, you cut it. It's, it's worth eleven. That's two hundred. 
that's 275,000 and there's some places spotting things as high as 17. Yeah, that would piss me off just a little bit. But that actually goes into another thing here. Um, this is part, now MT Gox is claiming this kept the hack that happened in them from having a lot of, what, what they're claiming is one account was compromised, went and transferred a bunch of coins, then tried to sell them all but got triggered by the thousand dollar a day limit so now they're rolling back everything and figuring out what has been compromised. You know, they're telling everybody, change your passwords, yada yada and so forth. Um, yeah, the 25K was not from NT Gox. That was a person that was stupid. He could have got exploited anyway. He could have had a bank account for $250,000 and also would be vulnerable to this. Well, uh, it, it, well yeah, and, and see, that, that, that actually goes into something I consider both the most desirable thing about the Bitcoins and simultaneously its greatest flaw. And that for all intents and purposes, the Bitcoins are made up cash. All sales final, buyer beware, even fraudulent sales, somebody hacks into your computer and does things they're not supposed to with your wallet or accessing something that's accessing your wallet or so on and so forth, you know, they can clear out your account and there's nothing you can do about it. You don't you don't call up the Bitcoin authority and go, Hey, will y'all reverse this transaction? I didn't authorize it. They go, We can't. We don't even we can't even verify you actually made it. <laughs> Which could be a point for Bitcoin banks, uh, where you would make transactions through them so they could verify it because you go through their system first. No, no, and, and that, that to me is the big missing thing right now in the Bitcoin. We need two things. We need act actual Bitcoin banks and actual Bitcoin reserves that... Right entirely independent of any any authority anything or are doing that and you pick the one that fits your needs best mt gox is trying to do this and a couple of the exchanges are trying to do this where they say if you're using our our buy buttons and stuff and the and the coins are already in our system we'll approve it instantly what they should be doing is like you're saying we'll take one to three days to approve it to make sure there's no eh -eh going on it's like it's it's basically going to sit it, it, it clears, but it's pending in our system to make sure it was authorized. Or, or they, could, you, they could make you keep it in their system, and they could maybe insure it up to a thousand Bitcoin or something and have a few, and have a bit in their reserve. Because I don't think people are going to go to something which takes three days, unless this is a really trusted bank, and they have a deal with the shop people so that the thing will get transferred instantly, but the money won't go across until then, and the shop has some kind of refund policy. It, 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 they've got to be big enough. They've got to be canonical. And I don't mean canonical like Ubuntu. I mean the word canonical, where they got they got to be the bank for Bitcoin for people to trust them. Well, and that, that is what the big gold rush in the Bitcoins right now is. All of these little reserves, trading places, e-wallets, and so forth, they're all trying to establish themselves as that authority. The canonical Bitcoin. Yeah, the canonical, uh, yeah, we're the security for the Bitcoin. You can trust your Bitcoins to us. They will go through, yada, yada. Uh, but uh, all of them at the same time, and this is why I say this is the missing piece. Like I said, every e-wallet exchange, so on and so forth, is trying to do this. But at the same time, every single one of them are trying to pretend that they're not a bank. Like, oh, we're not a financial institution. We're, we're, yeah. yeah, we're not. I'm like, okay, that's great for a tax dodge uh, and everything else. But at the it's end of that, the geeks are afraid of that. I mean, one of the reasons people are moving to Bitcoin is because they don't like, you know, the Federal Reserve and what, what, what's happening to the dollar. Well, no, and and you don't have to implement that stuff, but for it, this to be stable and uh, acceptable to merchants and to help prevent things like have happened here where a hack shuts down a large part of the economy for uh, going on slightly over a day now, who, who knows how much longer it will take for everything to get sorted yeah, out. It's been, going, it's been going down almost as fast that, as it went up, but... Keep in mind that it's still way above what it used to be, um, and I don't think that it's going to drop to pennies because, I, I don't know, I just don't see that being possible because people are still buying things, people are still trading, things have not, it hasn't 
Uh, in the sense of how volatile bitcoins are, I mean, if this was a no normal currency, this would be a plummet. But in the sense of how quickly it rose, how quickly it rose, it going down this fast is not a total plummet. Uh, because it getting to five dollars was a big deal. I mean, it, where, where I remember it, went, it stayed stable at around eighty cents, uh, and I don't think that it's going to go down that low again. So, in a total time of say three months, I think it still went up. Yeah. It, it, well, it depends what number you're looking at, but yeah. I'm just going by what I was able to use to purchase stuff off off the different stores. But, um, well, no, and it's like, it, th th that actually brings to another thing. But like you say, the fact that this uh, it's desperately trying to avoid any kind of banking system or anything else, that makes it only desirable to fringe utopian merchants. Uh, yeah. w when I look at the logistics of, I'm a Joe Schmo merchant. I'm a small business. What the hell? I'll take big coins. Why not? All customers. But I look at it, and I'm like, uh, on the whole... Uh, if I'm doing more than a few hundred bucks a day in bitcoins as a merchant right now due to the volatility, due to the lack of an actual bitcoin bank, an actual bitcoin reserve system, so on and so forth, I'm taking one hell of a risk if I do more than a few hundred bucks a day. Yes. Uh, which it's like uh, as, a, as a small business, I would look at that as... Okay, when they straighten that out, I'll be more than happy to take it. But until then, I don't want to touch it because it could bankrupt me. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and, um, how long do you think... How many... No, a better question. How many people need to be using and what volume of trading do we need to see before it takes something major? Uh, like... I don't know. Um, before Bitcoin... The price of Bitcoin, it, it's very, it's almost as hard to change, or hopefully harder to change than the price of the dollar before it becomes a staple enough currency that people are okay, okay, I'm going to get this, it's probably going to be worth about the same in 10 years, that's good. Maybe, since Bitcoin is meant to be a bit deflationary, it'll be worth a little bit more, that's not a problem. But it should be worth about the same. How long do you think, how, how big does Bitcoin have to get before people can trust that I have one dollar in Bitcoin now, I'll have less than the difference, less than fifty cents off that dollar in ten years. Uh, well, there's some geeks that trust that, but really the missing piece goes back to uh, convincing uh, merchants on the whole to take it. And merchants on the whole are only going to want to touch it when that missing piece is there. Uh, so it, it's not an amount. It could be as little as two bitcoin. It could be as little as the equivalent of twenty dollars U.S. a day. Way less than is being traded on the exchanges. The average amount of trading going on in an exchange in any given day right now is in excess of a quarter of a million dollars. Uh, the thing that needs to be straightened out is somebody. Uh, somebody needs to stand up and go. We're not going to pretend we're not a bank. We are a bank. Uh, if if you if you want an account with us, you know we're a bank. I'm sorry, uh, but we're not going to impose any of the usual bullshit a bank imposes. Of yes, I'm sorry. Did did somebody steal your ID? I'm sorry, you can't give us cash. Did 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 you buy a car three years ago? Oh, I'm sorry, you can't give us cash. No, they're not going to impose any of that shit. Basically, they want to know who you are so they know how to report the money in the account to the appropriate tax authority. Uh, and I know there's a lot of people getting in on the Bitcoin thing are like, this is a great way to do a tax dodge. If that becomes the popular use of the Bitcoin, I guarantee well, you... know, you know, uh, you think that's worse than, um, what, uh, what's it called? What's it called? <sighs> what's it called, the place that sells drugs for Bitcoin, in Bitcoin? Oh, I'm not sure I want to bring them up. Oh God, I remember well, hearing about that. Yeah, they were they were so it, yeah. <laughs> I think it, it's called the uh, I don't know White Road or something. I, the, 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 I don't know. Um, I'll just call it the White Road for the purpose of this. That's not what it's called. But I don't really know the name of it. But the thing is, Bitcoin's oh so perfect for something like that because it is anonymous. You know, it's it's almost it, actually no it, it is more anonymous than a physical 
single dollar. You know, there's there's nothing associating a single person besides, and if you change the transaction, the only association is that Bitcoin is that Bitcoin. There's no association with anything else besides this is this. Um, so it's also good for that, but I don't know. Governments may care in the future more about the fact that there's no way to collect uh, tax on this unless it moves through one authority or all authority or you'll be forced to have your Bitcoin to move through some authority that has a deal with the government that gives partially taxes. I mean, you'd be able to collect taxes but not income tax. Um, well, and, uh, and this is... These- that, that, that's the thing. Uh, that, that, that's why I'm saying part of why uh, they need to stop doing the tax dodge thing. Uh, at the end of the day, I, I have news for you. At the end of the day, uh, the US, like uh, you, you've brought up the whole drug war thing and yada yada and so forth, but I, I'll let you in on a little secret on the whole war on drugs. The IRS doesn't care if 100% of your income comes from illegal means as long as you pay them. That's really all they care about. They want their damn money. <laughs> Rather, they don't care if you're if every single thing you do to make money is illegal, as long as you say I earned X equivalent in dollars, and here's my tax bill. Uh, the IRS does not give a shit. Now, certain federal a- a- agencies like the uh, and certain DEAs might care. But at the end of the day, there's a reason they tend to go after these people on tax thing rather than the actual crime, because they care more about did they get their tax money. Yes. Uh, which would mean, um, really, it, the only thing that you would need to do to appease Uncle Sam, regardless of the type of commerce going on, although you, for this to really stick, you need to encourage legitimate commerce, not just black marketeering. Uh, you never going to have... You might, you're never going to be able to have income tax, uh, and I do because people will never accept going through one authority that. No, 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 back. no. You you don't have to go through an authority. Uh, now here here's the thing with the income tax thing. Um, at some point, if you want to transfer that to non bitcoins, you have to go through an exchange, oh, sure. an exchange, a bank, a yada yada, and so forth. And the, it, it, here's all you need to do to keep the governments of the world happy against the Bitcoin. These th- is these local exchanges and yada yada. They report the transactions in the same. I, I get a um, 1099 uh, from Yahoo, my various contract uh, people I work for. Uh, and a couple of blog sites. For those of you who don't know, I do blog for money, and I get paychecks for that. And I, I, you know, it's a few thousand dollars here, a thousand dollars there a year. They they have my tax information, and they report that income to the IRS. Uh, I then do my Schedule C and explain how you know I spent blog money to do this, I spent blog money to do that. So it's not all income. That's going to be the responsibility of anybody who's you know, trading their things and yada yada. Uh, as long as that income is reported, and, and you know, this could actually be a service any of the banks and things could do. Not only could they just send you the thing, but they could like integrate something into their system along the line of TurboTax. What did you buy to buy this thing? And they just send you a filled out Schedule C to, uh, 1099 and all the paperwork you need to give the IRS. That's like pre-done for you as part of their service of allowing you to tra- change bitcoins to U.S. dollars or euros or whatever. You know, I, I, I don't... Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, one thing about banks. Uh, so banks today uh, work on, um, you know, fractional reserve. They lend out more than they have and that, that's not necessarily a problem, but they do that. That way they can get money off uh, loans. Um, now, a bank, now banks weren't always like that. Banks used to be to protect your money, and that would be what a Bitcoin bank would be for. It would be to protect your money. Um, but that would mean that the bank could earn money in, in two ways. Either you pay them to protect your money and to provide you with that information like people used to do with banks. Uh, or they would collect some sort of um, uh, tax uh, on, well, percentage better, on all your purchases that you make with the 
count some small number or something. Uh, but I mean, they could do loans, but it, it's not easy to do. L- loans, loans, and bitcoins would not make sense. The only reason loans yeah. in U.S. <laughs> dollars make sense is because we charge interest and we print more money. Since there's a fixed exactly. number of bitcoins, and bitcoins are not generated by printing more coins, bitcoins are generated by the Bitcoin system mining more coins and distributing them through the people who mine them, who then distribute them into right. the economy. You you could not do loans in bitcoins. I would argue... Well, I've done some loans in Bitcoins. Uh, you're charging interest? <laughs> yes. I don't see how that could not blow up eventually. Because at some point, there's not going to be... It, it, it almost did. It almost did. But I kind of talked with the guy. And he wanted to say, Well, I only owed you this much in dollars. And I'm like, I, I never paid you in dollars. I paid you, you know, this. So I would be losing a lot of money if you paid me the same amount that you owed me in dollars. The only way a loan in bitcoins would make sense would be if it's a zero interest loan, like loans back when we did gold and silver. If I gave you an ounce of gold, you owe me an ounce of gold back. The problem with that is, like you're saying, because it's a deflationary currency, I would see a high degree of default because the moment you know, the Bitcoin doubles in value, they're going to go, there's no way in hell I'm giving you a whole Bitcoin back for the Bitcoin you gave me, and so on. It's, right, it, it, exactly. <laughs> it, and I did get that result, but I'm not making any loans anymore because that was just, that was pretty scary to do. Um, anyway, because uh, I, I would have lost like 200 bucks. Uh, <laughs> but he was, he did eventually, you know, return it, so that was good, but... I did, I did make loans before that when Bitcoins weren't worth as much and they went well, but anyway. Um, so yeah, loans would be hard, but what I'm saying, without the loans, which a bank couldn't really do, they could make maybe, the only kind of things that way could happen is loans to businesses, um, like official businesses they could make, which would be more kind of a venture capitalist, and that'll, that, that should be in Bitcoin, you know. But um, you're going to have to pay the bank somehow. The bank will not be happy to take your money free because that's going to cost them money. Unlike if I went to any American bank, they make money with the money that I put in. The bank in Bitcoin, because they can't really make loans, will not make money by me just putting in a million dollars. That just gives them a liability. So I would have to somehow pay them for them protecting my money and providing their services. There, there are there are two okay. ways there are two ways you could make that worth the. Um, w- most people think most people are used to banks just wanting them to put in their money yeah. and giving giving them money to do it. Now you're going to have a bank that they need to be paid to take your money. Well, okay, that's there's there would be two types of accounts I would see with a Bitcoin bank. Type of account one is I put my bitcoins in the bank and I'm basically uh, I would equate this actually to the same way the bullion market works Um, there there are three ways to invest in bullion you can either buy physical gold silver and platinum and then you know hoard it in your basement somewhere and go money my precious or you can buy it you can buy the equivalent of stock in a share pool which is either buying shares in a mine or in somewhere that says they have a vault full of gold and silver and you own a percentage of it and they're storing it. In that case, you just buy the share and whether gold, silver, platinum go up or down, your the value of your share goes up and down. These are, yeah, some of them are good, some of them are big Ponzi schemes. Uh, then the third one is I buy the physical commodity but I acknowledge that I do not have the resources to store it in a way that will keep its optimal value. A a perfect example of that is actually silver bullion because silver is very prime to corrode. It it, it will not stay pristine silver unless you store it in the proper conditions. Uh, And a lot of people don't know how to clean silver without uh, stripping silver away from silver because they'll use silver cleaners instead of the chemical process. So for those people, it actually makes sense to buy the physical thing, but pay a really small management fee to lease space in 
person A's vault. You pay them like 50 bucks a year, or 100 bucks a year. These are not always available. It depends on the economy and the value of the stuff. So, so places aren't always offering this type of storage. That would be account one with a Bitcoin bank. Account two is what every bullion exchange in the world is, and there's no reason a bank couldn't do this, which is you can buy it, but if at any point you want it, you have to pay an origination fee, which is we'll agree to give you silver or, or gold for the price of shipping it to you, or if you want to trade it to dollars, we're gonna, you, you can sell it, but we're going to charge an origination fee for that sale. If it's worth 50, if, if uh, an ounce of silver is worth 25 bucks right now, we're going to give you 2420 or, or something like that. Uh, and, if that. And that would be the other kind of account, which would be actually perfect for small businesses. I'm going to take bitcoins, but to fill my order, I have to transfer some of it to dollars. So you're going to let me take bitcoins and process them electronically with no processing fee, no credit card fee, which makes it very desirable to do uh, transactions in bitcoins because there's no origination fee, but you're going to charge me money to sell it on your exchange that then trades it into dollars that I can actually use to fill my order with my suppliers because my suppliers don't take bitcoins. Now, that type of account would only make money during the intermediary transition period. If at some point Bitcoins ever took over the world economy and everybody everywhere was accepting Bitcoins, then that type of bank would never make money. But that type of bank can make a shitload of money in the intermediary decades. Because it's going to take, even if Bitcoins work perfectly, it's a fledgling currency right now. My guess is at no point in the 21st century will the Bitcoin take over the world economy. Ugh. Okay, sorry, sorry to bore everybody. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, you know, it's really been this this drop in bitcoins has really been a huge avalanche effect in that. Um, I've been I've been looking at news and all these different sites are giving bunches of bad PR about Bitcoin and that lowers the price further. I know. Uh, it, 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 uh, honestly, I am smelling some media manipulation in the sun. Because uh, I, 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 I am too. Yeah, I, I, I think there's some very smart people who are sitting back here and going, "Let's let's fuel the fire, let's fuel the fire, let's drive the price down, and then buy as many bitcoins as we can get our fucking hands on, <laughs> and sit back, and in a year or three, when the dust settles, we'll be rich." <laughs> Smart people. Uh, of course, it's a little hard to do with all the exchanges shut down right now, but uh, it's, I'm, I'm sure they'll open back up for business at some point. And like you said, they're not all shut down, but... Uh, you know, and that's something that I find a little weird about some of the exchanges. Like, uh, MT Gox is the primary exchange for taking U.S. dollars, but for some reason they're based out of Japan. Maybe a tax dodge. Uh, it, it, well, it's partly a tax dodge, but that's the other reason for the thousand dollar caps. Because if they they do more than a thousand dollars, they're officially a financial institution, which is why they're trying to dodge that. They have the they have the thousand a day, ten thousand a month. Like I said, you know, realistically, a few hundred bucks a day is the cap, which makes it hard to really cap. Going back to if we think somebody's really manipulating the value of the coins, which well, it sounds like we both do, we think there's people who not necessarily are responsible for the hacks that started this whole thing, but they're definitely trying to take advantage of what it could do for their pocketbook. So you think that Bitcoin's going to rebound? Uh, not overnight, but inevitably, yes. By nature of what it is, if there's any, if any faith is restored in this. Um, honestly, uh, trying to do a Bitcoin competitor would be foolish. Uh, if, if, if you're just trying to make a, a complete made-up currency like the Bitcoin. Uh, now, I, I can see some of the ideas of infinitely fractional currency trying to compete with the uh, Bitcoin. That would make sense. 
But as far as another Bitcoin, I mean, the whole Bitcoin project is entirely open source. There is nothing to stop some entity A from basically making another Bitcoin and calling it whatever the hell they want. But it doesn't really make sense to do that. And the reason I say that is because uh, even with this setback in the Bitcoin, the hard work of the Bitcoin of getting people to actually buy into it is done. That's the hardest part of just starting something like this. Even though there's bad PR here, that work is still done. It's still more. It's it's still less time, effort, energy, and resources. People can do things with bitcoins, like people bought cars and stuff. Yeah, that, that that's a couple of the things that would need to happen. Like I, I would like I, honestly, like if I'm a geek and I'm like, what the hell? I'll take my paycheck in bitcoins. So I have to go find a landlord that takes bitcoins for rent, and I want to and I want to buy my car at a dealership that will finance me in bitcoins, <laughs> and so on and so forth. That's uh, we talked about how that could be a little bit of a loaded gun, but uh, in, in, inherently there's nothing to stop that. Uh, and that's one of the things that would be necessary there. So, um, is this just going to be a Bitcoin show, though? I mean, uh, what do you think about, you know, the LulzSec things? Say that again? LulzSec? Uh, I, I'm either not hearing you correctly or I don't know what you're talking about. Um, I so, haven't done my research into that yet. Uh, I think it's one more fuel for the hacker file. Right. Uh, a lot of people... And first, let me make a segue, because it's an amazing segue. Uh, these people who act as the CIA, they prefer uh, to get donations, and they, they all over their IRC, they want to get donations in Bitcoin. So... Interesting little segue there. They're huge about Bitcoin. They like Bitcoin. Uh, yeah. Well, there's a lot of people who like the Bitcoin. That's one of the reasons I desperately want to establish legitimate, uh, that I want to see legitimate transactions in Bitcoins be established. Because if 90% of the transactions going on in Bitcoins right now are like hacker groups going, we want money that they can't touch, or. Uh, mob or drug or you know all the things that we identify as the axis of our government doesn't like it uh, it makes it very easy to sell to the legislator well the bitcoins have no redeeming or valid purpose we need to just outlaw them <laughs> make it a felony to have bitcoins yeah. <laughs> and, 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 I've been hearing some rumors that uh, LulzSec has been fueled by maybe some people to uh, help shut down internet rights. But, okay. Um, what's interesting is that like is not anonymous. I remember when I heard about people taking down the heads of anonymous, I laughed because there's not really heads of anonymous. I mean, the point, anonymous is more of a concept than a group. It's just the concept that if people can uh, get revenge, and you do something that makes them mad, they will. That's just the concept. They have these, have these people who are, just have the ability to, I don't know, send a DDoS at someone, and they know how to do it, and if they, if they want to, they will. That's, that, that's just the concept of anonymous. It doesn't, it's not one guy that's organizing these things. A lot of times, you know, it's just people posting, hey, do this, and they do. Rather than, LulzSec is actually a group and it does actually have some leaders who they listen to and they do control botnets and they do do these things. So there's an interesting comparison there. I had a hard time ex explaining what Anonymous is to people because they all thought that it was this big hacker group who meet together and, you know. Well, and, and that's the it's, picture. It's, it's, it's not. It's just it, all it is. It's, it, it's I know. I, I, I know. And, and that's the picture we're trying to paint politically. You know, I, I, I smell new hacker legislation somewhere. I, I haven't seen its actual head yet, but I smell it, damn it, because uh, there's this, all this, 
the last time that I saw this much PR going on, both in media, coming out of the lobbyists, coming out of the legislator, coming out of everyone of, well, we're, we're the white hats trying to stop these evil black hats with a nefarious agenda, and we know who they are. We just need more tools to go after. The last time I saw this crap was in the mid to late 80s when they were trying to get what has been the foundation for anti-hacking laws uh, on the books. Uh, you know, it's like we have this whole handle on it. These are bad, evil people, you know, <laughs> who are doing things like doing tones at payphones and uh, accessing FTP accounts that have no security on them whatsoever. These are evil, evil people. <laughs> like, <laughs> and I'm just like, like, ah. Oh. But, you know, at the end of the day, unfortunately, there's enough people out there who know absolutely nothing about this stuff. Who, like, if you tell them, we're, we're, we're going after the head of Anonymous. What head? Well, the head! It's like the idea of an organization that is not an organization that has no head or any hierarchy of any kind is a really foreign concept in our society. Yeah. It, it, it's a completely foreign concept. Because everything... Well, it's, it's, just, it's just... All it is, it's a foreign concept in the way that people are trying to think of it. It's not a foreign concept. It's the same concept, basically, that if uh, a king does something bad, a riot will start. That's the concept. There's no leader starting that riot. It's just people are mad and they get together. You know, it's the same concept of a riot, you know? So people, you know, have known this before. It's always existed. The concept of, you know, people, if they if they can and if, they're, if there's enough will to, they'll get together and do something without a leader. Well, but even for the... But it, 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 even for the riot to get going, you know, somebody has to throw that first stone and then somebody has to go, hey, that's a good idea, everybody throw stones, you know, and it's like... It, it, well, that's what happened. No, I, 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 I know, but see, but yeah. that, that's not a leader. That's just somebody who was fed up with poor impulse control. Which... Right, exactly. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. there, it's, it, it, it really isn't a leader. It's just someone who's pissed off, so he throws the first stone and everyone says... You know what? I'm pissed too. And well, since he already did it, I don't feel bad about doing it. Third guy, oh, I'm probably not even going to get in trouble because so many people are doing it, and the rest think that, and they do it. Yeah. Yeah, and then you know, mob rule, and there you go. Um, but uh, that, that really is, you know, there's no way to take out the head of that. It's just. Well, no, and, and honestly, the only way you take things like that out is to address the underlying problem. Maybe the king right. shouldn't be a prick, you know? Exactly, right. <laughs> but, but, uh, I, 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 don't do this, just the people, you know, a riot does not start for no reason. <laughs> oh, no, but see, that, tension. That, that's the sales pitch we go on now. I mean, it's... The reality is, our uh, th this is a shift that's going on in society as a whole right now. This is one of the reasons it's kind of, uh, boy, we've really gotten on oodoo land here now. Um, I am scared to death by the growing implementations of things like zero tolerance and the idea that expressing yourself in any way, shape, or form privately should translate into public, swift, and harsh penalties, uh, which it, it's just, I'm like, we do not want to live in a society where we wrap people up that tight. Because when they're wrapped up that tight, you wind up with the situation you're talking about. The king sneezes wrong and people start throwing stones because they have no appropriate outlet at all. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, there, there always is tension. Um, uh, and so, I don't really know where further to go this, and I'm kind of hungry. Do you have anything more to say? No, like, like I said, everyone, we were just doing an impromptu on this. What the heck? <laughs> so, food for thought. Um, leave comments on, like, what you think this means. If you actually, you know what, on the thing, we brought up three things. We brought up uh, winding people up tight, the hacking 
stuff and the Bitcoin. So does anybody think the Bitcoins are going to bounce back from this? Do we think it's a stopgap? Do we think it's the end of the Bitcoin confidence? Do we think there's going to be, do, do we think I'm wearing my tinfoil hat or does anybody else smell hacker legislation in the works? And just the general underlying things of what's really spurring all of this stuff, which is people are very fed up, which is really the, what's fueling all of this. People are very fed up and have no confidence in what is. Do, do we think there's any way to address that? Because at this point, I'm not sure there actually is. <laughs> Anything else to add or stop there? Um, yeah, that's it. Stay classy, San Diego. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh.